I am on time. <laughs> hey, y'all. Welcome back. <laughs> okay, let me get myself on. I almost knocked over my microphone. Um, welcome back to the podcast. My view on the view, y'all. <sighs> Were any of you like me when Joe came out, when he sat down, especially when he went right up to Anna, I almost cried. <laughs> I know I'm a menopausal woman like Anna, but I'm like, wow. I mean, I almost felt like saluting. <laughs> I haven't never been the military. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for joining me for our after the show chat. This is where those of us who are watching The View, or if you're listening to The View on podcast, we get together uh, after the live shows. I um, come on Monday through Friday when there's a live show. 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time in the U.S. Um, you'll catch it whenever, you know, um, it goes live where you are. And uh, we just talk about our viewer experiences, what we thought about the show, what we like, what we didn't like. Uh, we gripe, we complain, we praise, uh, we beat on the desk, at least I do with my pen. Brian! <laughs> okay, let me look at my notes. Okay, so much, y'all, so much. By the way, I hope y'all are having a fantastic Wednesday. All right. First, I got to tell y'all, Joe said something today um, that my dad said. My dad, uh, when he turned 76, which was a long time ago, <laughs> well, it wasn't that long ago, but it was a few years ago. One of the things he said, you know, my mom had passed away by that time, of course. And so I was uh, hanging out with him and uh, the grandkids, everybody was calling him. And one of the things he said to me is he said, I can't believe I'm 76. He said, it doesn't even, it just doesn't seem like I'm that old because um, and some of you who've been around older people, you may recall this. They always say, I feel the same way I did when I was like 40 and 50 and 60 or maybe younger, but I know I'm older. It's just on the inside, I feel pretty much like I've always felt. That's because our spirit has no age to it. But when Joe said today, he said, I, I have a difficult time saying my age. I can't believe I'm really that old. And he was like, I'm like, dang, man. <laughs> and I, I thought, yeah, that's what daddy said, too. You know, it really is, um, you know, something to grow older. It's a blessing. It's a privilege to grow older. I will tell y'all, I've said this many times before. If we only could have the right view of aging, we wouldn't have so many anti-aging products. We wouldn't have so many anti-aging um, apparatuses. We wouldn't be, uh, as a country, as a nation, as a world, on this mad rush to go backwards. We would bask in the joy of what it really means to grow older, to see yourself in different phases of your life's journey, which will have an end just like it had a beginning. But in terms of your aging, you ought to, Wear that thing like a badge of honor. I am. It's a decision. You see, it's a decision because this world makes you think something's wrong. If you grow older, you should be fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, fighting it all the way. And you spend so much time fighting it that you really forget. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to see this age. I'm blessed to be this age. I'm blessed to have wrinkles. That means I've lived. I'm, I'm blessed to have these lines around my face. That means I've laughed a lot. <laughs> you know, maybe I've gotten angry, you know, and all those things. And so, as I said, I really feel like there should be an anti, anti-aging movement. And I'm going to be on the front lines saying, uh-uh, it's a joy. It's a privilege, you know. And so um, I really will tell y'all, watching Joe on the show today spoke volumes to me, especially when you contrast, you know, he's 81, Joy's 81. <laughs> Did y'all see when <laughs> Did y'all see when Joy turned to Joe uh, and said, I'm your age, I'm the same age. <laughs> and, and, and then Joe, being a gentleman, grabbed her hand and said, None of the ladies sitting next to me are older than me. And then Whoopi said, well, they are today. <laughs> There's one today. <laughs> and so that was so fun. Um, but yeah, he looked fantastic. He really did. 
you know, um, I got to get petty. <laughs> I got to get real petty. Child, I am so glad for once. Hell, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Where, where's my pen? Where's my pen? <laughs> Brian, mm-hmm. y'all need to pin, keep Alyssa's hair pinned back the way y'all had it today. Why? Because I, for one, am sick and tired of this girl, like, fooling with her hair every day. It's like, why don't you just pin the crap back, girl? I mean, we know it's weave. So it's like, just pin the weave back <laughs> the way that they had it today. I'm like, if you don't watch show every day, or maybe if you listen to the podcast, you know, uh, which I do sometimes when I'm traveling, you miss the visuals. But I'm telling you this girl font, I'm one of those people. Like I, I can't like little things. You know what I mean? I think all of us are like this. Like there are little things like, would you just get still? Would you just stop? <laughs> What's all that noise over there? Like, girl, would you stop? And then she's always, when she fools with her hair, she always looks at, at the camera. So there must be something there in the studio where they can actually see themselves. I know they have a monitor, but I don't know if the monitor, if she has one like directly in front of wherever she looks, because when she fondles with her hair, she looks over there every single time. And it's like, Alyssa, could you just focus on what you're supposed to be doing, girl? Of course, you ain't doing nothing no way. Okay. But could you just even pretend that you're trying to focus? So I was really glad. This is the very first time since she's been on this show. What is it, y'all? Two years now, going into three or whatever, that her hair has been pinned back. And I'm like, I know she has big ears. And um, if you're listening to me, you may think that that's something I said. That's actually a running joke at the table. And see, because you haven't been watching, you didn't know that. <laughs> and if I hadn't just told you that, you would have jumped on me in the comments thinking it was something I came up with because <laughs> you didn't know. So your opinion wouldn't have been informed. OK, no, that's something she says all the time about her big ears. That's the thing she's, she says she's most uh, self-conscious about. And <laughs> they even joked that she was like Dumbo could get up and fly, you know, based on her ears. But um, so I know that's why she has her bangs the way she does to cover up her ears. But the way that um, Derek, shout out to Derek Monroe, the hairstylist, the lead hairstylist, the way he had her hair pinned back today, you couldn't see her big ears. So I thought that's a good look right there, you know. And so anywho, so that's petty. I was really glad. I'm telling y'all, it's really annoying. Um, they all looked fantastic. I was really glad. Alyssa looked really pretty today. I was glad that she wore a suit. Y'all, is this the first time we've ever seen Alyssa dress in a professional way? Mm -hmm. I think it is. And, she, and I thought, now I know that this is a fun show. Look, it's live. I mean, you know what I mean? So I understand that, you know, you want to look cute and, and, and things like that. I believe in dressing attractive as a woman too. Uh, not slutty, but I do believe in dressing attractive. But I, I had never seen her in a suit. And I thought, you know what? Now I could see her. Um, in the situation room, you know, because she looked like a professional today. Um, I thought Sunny looked fantastic. That that dress, I think that was a belt maybe, or maybe that was just the way the dress was made. Gorgeous. I love the colors that they choose for Sunny. They really, really, Sunny is a beautiful woman, but those clothes, those colors really accentuate her beauty. Anna looked fantastic. She wore white uh, at the DNC. She wore white today. She looked fantastic. Sarah looked great. Whoopi, <coughs> I'm joking. You know, listen, one of the things I admire about Whoopi and I hoped to hope to continue to grow to be the kind of woman where I can just be I can just be who I am. It doesn't matter who it is. And that's when, you know, Whoopi to me, y'all, is proof of what we always hear people say, you know, be yourself, love yourself enough to be yourself no matter who comes in the room. She is exemplifies that. And she did it today too. She looked good. So I'm not, I, I was actually joking when I was just coughing. She actually did look good. And I was glad that she let them put a little bit of makeup on her because Whoopi, Whoopi doesn't need makeup. Whoopi has that kind of skin and those kind of um, high cheekbones, the beautiful bone structure where she is beautiful with eyebrows, without them. Um, I've seen in some movie roles, they'll put some on her um, or she'll let hers grow out or whatever. So she's beautiful. But I love the fact that she can be herself. Yes, there are times in the past that has very greatly annoyed me. And I'm like, Whoopi, please. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. I love that because a lot of people cannot be themselves no matter who comes in the room. OK, um, I love segment one. Did y'all see that when they were disagreeing? I was like, I think this is the first time since Megan left that at the table, we had so many diverse opinions just amongst the women. There wasn't a guest. Uh, Alyssa had one view of it. Sunny, Sunny countered that. Then S Sarah countered Alyssa. Then 
Joy countered something that Sonny said. And I was like, wow. And then uh, Anna came in and Anna was countering them all. I was like, whoa, was this planned, Brian Tetta? Because if it was, my brother, keep it up. Because that was fantastic. It was beautifully done. And then Whoopi came in because uh, Joy then turned to Alyssa and said, you're in the minority. And uh, Whoopi said, that's the nature of the table. You know, sometimes you're in the minority and sometimes you're in the majority. And see, that's another thing that makes you, um, it reminds me of why Whoopi is the moderator. Because Whoopi can kind of whip it all back up together and just... Just, uh, you know, bring it everybody back to center to know this is the nature of the view. We will not always see things the same. Well, I got to tell you all something. I got to get petty again. I wrote this down. Joy's jokes are tired. <laughs> y'all. OK, this was in segment one. I was like, Joy, please don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm like. Is it just me? <laughs> now I'm being facetious. I know it's not just me because I read our comments in our community. Y'all listen, I love joy. Y'all know I do. And y'all know joy is always the aunt in my head. Okay. But sometimes joy's jokes are tired. I'm like, this is so typical. It's like the bah, 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 type jokes. It's like, okay. And then there are some times where she's, you know, heck of funny, you know, but I was like, today, don't do it, Joy. Not today, you know. And did y'all see how controlled Joy was? But you notice she kept looking at Brian. She kept looking at Brian. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, because Brian has told her, don't, don't get wild today. Today, we got the president of the United States of America, the most powerful position in our country here. Get yourself together. Y'all remember when they were um, covering the election live a few years back when Donald Trump won, one of the things that Brian, that they've all told us that Brian said, don't tell Joy, right? Because he said, you know, Joy is very difficult to control when she gets, you know, either mad or what have you. And um, today I noticed she kept looking and I thought, good, that she's looking at Brian. So that lets me know that there was a conversation that he had with her. Because remember, I told you guys, I shared a story with y'all a few weeks ago. I think it was, or maybe it was last week. Time moves so fast that a lot of people online, of course, that doesn't mean everybody, but a lot of people were getting very irritated with Joy's ir interruptions. And um, I mean, and yeah, she, I mean, they all interrupt, but Joy has, Joy is doing it more this season than I think ever. And I think it's because she knows, um, listen, they are much more aware of all the things going on there than we are. And um, I believe that this is Joy's last season. As of this date that I'm talking to you, September 25th, girl, her contract has not been renewed. What does that tell us? This is our last season. That's what it tells us. OK, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, just like Joe had to pass a torch, just like one day me and you are going to have to pass the torch. Um, I was telling my sister uh, because my sister's her her mother-in-law no longer drives. Right. My sister's husband, her son, he drives her places. But her sister her mother-in-law sister, the 84 year old, she still drives. She goes and picks up her, you know, grandchildren at school. <laughs> and I told my sister, child, I ain't driving nowhere when I get 84. I'm going to have somebody driving for me, honey. If I ain't never been chauffeured around before in my life, it's going to happen in my eighties. You know, right? So we were just laughing about those things that there comes a point when you just turn it over and say, I don't want to clean no more. Uh, yeah, I don't want to cook no more. And I show ain't going to drive nowhere no more. Um, but, but yeah, so you have to just kind of turn it over. And Joy um, has a great life. Um, she has a great career outside of The View, which is fantastic. You know, her plays and all those things. And Joy is an old but young person, you know what I mean? In terms of her spirit, she's very youthful in her spirit. So she's going to be, she's going to be just fine when she leaves The View. But all this interrupting and these jokes, these tired jokes, I'm like, Joy, come on, testosterone. And sometimes that's like, I'm like, I don't know. I just felt like I wish she wouldn't have done it today since Joe, because if you didn't see the show, she talked a lot about testosterone. I was like, and men, I'm like, don't, <laughs> especially y'all know the rumor surrounding Joe. You can see, I was thinking about that too. Like, come on, Joy, don't, don't, don't go down this route, <laughs> you know, knowing the man has all these allegations surrounding him. So anywho, but yeah, the show was really, really good. Um, of course, most of the show was Joe, which it should have been. You know what I was hoping to y'all when it came Sunny's time to ask a question? I was like, girl, do not, do not ask these long, you know, how you set up the question. 
I don't, I really, I get irritated sometimes because she said it takes her too long to set it up because when, and I say that to say, because she repeats a lot of stuff that will be said in the introduction. And it's like, you don't need to do that. You know, just kind of, you know, like, let's say if someone's there with their book, like yesterday when Uzu was there with her book and when Michael Eric Dyson was there with his book, we'll be already told us the title of the book. But in Sonny's setup to her question, she repeated all that stuff. And I'm like, girl, you know, so uh, I'm like, he is 81. And yeah, people can get lost. You know, they're like, OK, wh- what is your question? You know what I mean? So anywho, so but that was good. She did tone it down today and she uh, made him very brief. I think when uh, Shaquille O'Neal was there, y- y'all remember that show last season or was it this season? Chat? I can't remember when Sonny had her blue card in hand, reading off all this stuff <laughs> right before she asked her question. Shaquille put his hand on her card and he pushed her card to the table or maybe the card was already on the table. And he said to her, you don't need that. Just go from your heart. And I I really think that did something and that helped her realize that there are some people who want you just to ask them their qu- your question. They don't, you know, because it it's very easy, you know, for people to, to be like, now, what is it that you're trying to ask me, though? You know what I mean? So, anywho, so it was a really good show, a really good show. Um, they didn't show Brian. Brian, where were you today? I mean, I know you were in the studio because I saw Joy looking at you, but I had hoped that they would show you, you know, on the screen. I wanted to see how you dressed up today. Did you wear a co- – because I would have hoped that you would have worn – because blue looks good on you. I would have uh, – light blue. I would have wished I, – I would have hoped, rather, that you would have worn a light blue suit, maybe with a red tie to look presidential, too. Um, so anywho, so I missed my, my, my dude, Brian on camera, but they showed Paul because Paul was forcing Whoopi to wrap it up. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was a really good show. I think, what do y'all think? I think they did really good. I think they did really good. Um, what I loved out of this entire show today, did y'all see this? When Joe came out, he went right to Anna. He totally walked past Whoopi. He, <laughs> He totally he walked past Sarah. It wasn't until after he had shook everybody's hand and everything that he was like, oh, yeah, you too, to Sarah. But he went right to Anna and they were looking each other in the eye. He held her hand. I couldn't read his mouth to see what he was saying to her. But, you know, can you imagine how that would make you feel? You know what I mean? I mean, let's be real about it. I mean, don't we all like to be singled out and to be made to feel important? And anyone who says they don't is a liar. And that's human nature. Like Joe said about something today on the show, he said, it's just human nature. It's human nature to want, if there's a group of people for you to be singled out for the person who's coming in to smile bigger at you. And when he did that, but you know what I loved even more is how Anna handled it. I don't know. I might would have snapped my finger (laughs) after he did like, yeah, see, see bitches. No, (laughs) No, I wouldn't have said that, but I think I probably would have been thinking, see, don't play with me. <laughs> I'm really in. <laughs> I'm in the inner of the inner circle. You, y'all, y'all just think y'all are, but no, but she handled it so graceful. She just kind of looked at the table and I said, I know Anna's like every other woman. And see, that's another layer to it. It's not just our human nature. It's our feminine nature for a man of power a man of status to single us out, you know? Uh, and so I thought, I know Anna's thinking, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I like, but, but you know what that said to me? They really do have a real friendship. Now I know they're not like cackling on the phone every day and he ain't texting her like, what you doing girl? But I know that they have a real relationship that was shown today in the way he greeted her. Um, but then too, y'all know that, um, Anna has known him. Didn't she say today 30 years? But I thought before she said she's known him for over 20 years. Well, I guess over 20 years uh, could be 30 years or at least close to 30 years. And so that was really evident today. I thought, wow, she really wasn't joshing when she said that they had a real relationship um, and that she was friends with uh, Jill and Joe. Um, What else? Joe handled himself well. I really feel like, um, you know, at, at certain points he did say he knew he was talking to, to taking too long to answer the question. But, you know, um, Joe's been on the show so many times. He knows how it goes that they only have a certain amount of time and stuff like that. But I really feel like 
the show, the ladies, they um, did a phenomenal job. You know what? Let me do something. Bravo, ladies of the view. Bravo. Yeah. Like, what did, were any of you also like uh, almost like on the verge of tears when <laughs> Joe sat down? Especially when they started, when the audience started clapping for him, when Whoopi said, you know, you let us set aside your ego and put your country above your ego above your own personal aspirations and ambitions. The crowd went wild. I'm going to tell you, I was clapping at home too, because I can only imagine what that was. Um, yes, we know he was forced out and Joe's never going to own up to that. I mean, you know, he is presidential. He's not going to say that. Um, Whoopi said it for him today. I do want to play that. That was really good. I was really glad that Whoopi brought this up, guys. Let's play this clip and then I'm going to let y'all go. I, I, I would beat Trump. I didn't like the way they did it. I'm going to just say it out loud because nobody says it out loud. I didn't like the way it was done publicly. I thought they could have done this in a different way because we didn't need to hear all the inner fight. I didn't like it. I'm saying it to you. I, you were my ride or die. I was going where, where you were going, that's what I was doing. So I just wanted to say. I think Joe was a lot of our ride or die. That was like a perfect way to say it. So guys, I enjoyed chatting with you guys today. I know some of you are on the subway, so I wanted to give you a longer episode of our after show chat today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I'll be here again, 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. Have a fantastic Wednesday. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you found that you enjoyed hanging out with me and tell everybody in the comments what you thought about today's show. Bye.